Before we get reading, Jen, can you think of a moment in sport over the last year or two where you've seen something and it's just brilliant? And it's kind of left you awestruck. You've just been, whoa, that was incredible. You read anything, heard anything? Do you actually heard about something this morning? Did you? Fresh, yeah. Very. <laughs> yeah. Federer yesterday, Wimbledon, in yeah. his match. Yeah. And most people at his age would probably be nearing the end of their career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Apparently, he won the first set, six games to love. Yeah. In 16 minutes. 16 minutes. 16 minutes. Roger Federer. That's unreal, isn't it? What a man. What 16 a man. minutes. Yeah. Yeah, that does leave Austra. you slightly awestruck, yeah. that's for sure. Mine, uh, Champions League final, mm -hmm. Gareth Bale, oh overhead yeah. kick. Did anyone see it? Outrageous, yeah. wasn't it? Wasn't that incredible? Comes on as a sub, ball gets crossed, pretty average cross, leaps up, overhead strike, boom. Oh, that there. was amazing, I remember that. Unbelievable. Didn't you, didn't you go to school with Gareth Bale, Dave? I, I did. Did you? He's clueless to who I am. Oh, no. But he's year below me at school, Gareth Bale. That's a good claim to fame, It though. is, yeah, really I take good. it, I'll take yeah. it. So, some moment in sport, have you had it? Have you had one of those moments you've seen something and it's just, it's kind of left you awestruck, your jaws dropped, you think, did that really just happen? Well, keep that in mind because we're going to have a look at a passage now where we see Jesus do something incredible and it leaves people awestruck. And we're going to look at one guy's reaction in particular. So Luke chapter 5. What page is that, Jen? It's page 15 in your little purple Luke's Gospels. And we're just going to look at the first 11 verses. Great. Can you read that? I can, yeah. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. But Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything and followed him. Great. Thanks so much. Now, that might be familiar to you. You might have heard of that story before, or that might be the very first time you heard of it. Either way, just take it all in for a second. So we've got our, disciple, uh, we've got our fishermen. Okay, they've just been fishing all night, and they're, they're tending to their nets. The reason they do that, they can't leave it, otherwise the nets would break. So they wash them down, and they make sure they get them all set. But Jesus turns up. And he's been teaching people, but he sees such a large crowd that actually he gets into Simon Peter's boat and he says, just pull back from the shore a little bit for me. Uh, so he does, and he starts teaching them God's word, the Bible, and he explains to them more about the things of God. When he finishes that, he then turns to Simon Peter and says, look, see the, the deeper water over there? Go over there and let down your nets. Now, Simon Peter's respectful in it because he's still sussing out who this person is. Uh, but he does say to him, look, we've been out there all night. This is our job. We're fishermen, and we haven't caught anything. But look, if, if you want to, let's go. So we, they get the nets, they get back into the boat, and they go over to the deep water, just where they were fishing all night. And this time, they let the nets down into the waters. And what happens next is incredible. Fish everywhere. It goes nuts. The, the nets start breaking because they can't catch all of the fish that are there. The boat starts sinking. It was an incredible moment where it would have just left them absolutely awestruck. It could have looked a little bit like this. I think we might have something that demonstrates it.
incredible, eh? I mean, have you let eat so many fish? Now, remember two things. These guys are fishermen. It was their job, yeah? They do this week in, week out. This kind of thing didn't happen that often. I remember the other thing. They were at this very spot all night. And then all of a sudden, they put the nets back in, and all of those fish appear. And what's their reaction? Look at it in verse 9. What's their reaction? They were astonished. Absolutely astonished. Jen, can you remember what was Praise's reaction on Joy Cam yesterday? Can you remember oh, it? Oh, yeah. <gasps> yes. <laughs> astonished. Remember your awestruck moment in sport? Remember Jen Wim, uh, Federer, Gareth Bale? What was yours? Something you'd never seen before. Mm. Something that just blew your mind. Sport for us is our thing. Fishing for the fishermen was their thing. And all of a sudden, this catch leaves them absolutely astonished. They've never seen anything like it. Mad. But it's really interesting to look now at Simon Peter's reaction. Let's look at that before we finish. Because what we see is not only is he kind of amazed at the whole situation. In this moment, Simon Peter... He's struck because it reveals something about this man, Jesus, that he hadn't quite realized before. And it also reveals something about himself. Uh, so let's think, how, what does it reveal to Simon Peter about Jesus, this amazing catch? Well, look, Simon Peter, he, he would have grown up going what was then to Saturday school. Sunday school for us now, but Saturday school. So he would have learned things about God. He would have known the Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, he would have read things like God parted the sea and God provided food from heaven for his people. And so we would have known that God can do these miracles. But also, as we've been thinking about the last few days, he also has made promises that he would send a rescuer. And so Simon Peter knew those kind of things. But probably if me and you were in that situation... He didn't think it would come when he was alive. Mm. He didn't think G the, the rescue would come whilst he was alive. Uh, so he probably was relaxed and thinking, it might, well, it might come at some point. But look at his reaction. Jen, just read that verse 8 for us. Yeah. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. He falls to his knees in front of this person. He's absolutely astonished. Knowing all that he knew, all of a sudden, right in front of him, he's just seen someone demonstrate absolute power and authority over nature. He's made all of that fish just appear like that. Something that not every fisherman can do, that's for sure, if not any fisherman can do. It's only something that God could do. He's just seen someone perform a miracle to provide enough fish to probably last them months and months. And you know, in that moment, I bet he is awestruck. Not just the fact that of all the fish. Suddenly, I think it dawns on him. Could this, could this Jesus man suddenly be God? Has, has he honestly got that amount of power and authority that only a God would have in that moment to show me all of that fish? I think it dawns on him, Jen, that he stood in front of the God of the universe. And so that's why I think he responds in this way. He falls to his knees because he sees just the amazing power that he has over the whole situation. That's what he does. But look at what he says. Just read again one last time. What does he say here, Jen? He said, go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Dave, why does he say that? Because it just seems a bit rude. Go away from me. Yeah, yeah. It's a strange word, isn't it? Go away from me. It's really hard for us to know exactly how he said it, what tone of voice. Mm. But I don't think it's because he doesn't like Jesus in this moment. Um, and he's certainly not angry. I think, as I said, it's revealing something here about himself that he doesn't necessarily like. See, he's, he's seen Jesus with all of this power and authority and in that moment, it kind of reveals the truth about himself because he's so different to Jesus. Uh, tell me, uh, VAR, yep. good thing or a bad thing? Very debatable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I think, it's, I, think still it's quite, I think it's a good thing. We're still sussing Mostly. out. Technology coming into sport is yeah. trying to help officials, umpires and everything. And it, rugby's had it for a while. VAR's coming in. Where we've probably had it, 
working at its best is tennis. Yeah. You mentioned Wimbledon. Yeah, Wimbledon. Wimbledon, what do they have? They have Hawkeye. Hawkeye. Yeah. Now, what does Hawkeye do? Obviously, when a call is made, the players have an opportunity, if they want to, to sort of uh, query that and see whether it was in or out. And so it zeroes right on in to where the spot was, and it will tell you whether it's in or out. And do you know how accurate Hawkeye is? I think it's supposed to be pretty much 100%, yeah, isn't it? As yeah, clo as close as we'll probably get yeah. with a few 0.1% yeah. probably there. And so it's that accurate. It reveals the truth of the shot. And you have it sometimes, you've seen it, where a player's convinced it was in, it was convinced it was in, and their opponent kind of challenges it, and you see their reaction, oh, that was definitely in, that was in. And then the Hawkeye reveals it was out. And at first, they're shot, they're like, no way. But you know what they do at that point? They admit it. They go, well, yeah, that's what it was. I can't, I can't argue with that. That's the truth. Well, a little bit like Simon Peter here. As he stands in front of Jesus and he sees what he's just done and he understands who he is. Do you know what he does in that moment? He suddenly realizes the truth about himself, that he is not worthy to be anywhere near this bloke. He's in front of God, a perfect God, a holy God, a righteous right before himself. God, he is an awesome God. And who is Simon Peter in comparison to him? He's a man like me. He's a human like us. And you know what that means? Well, Shanksy helped us understand that. He's broken. He gets things wrong. He probably did stuff that he regretted. I don't know if you've done any of that kind of thing. He probably says stuff that, in hindsight, wish he never said. Thought stuff that you wish no one ever knew you thought. Simon Peter would have done those kind of things. And he would have understood that he was in need of rescue. <laughs> and so look at his response. Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. What does Simon Peter do in this moment? He holds his hands up and he confesses his sin right in front of Jesus. And he says that he is sinful and he admits that he is in need of him by what he then does next. Do you see that? Yeah. Look what he does next. Verse 11. Have a look at verse 11. Can you read it for us, Jen? So they pulled up their boats on they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything and followed him. Yeah. See, he moves from calling him master to lord. That's the difference. Master is someone you might respect, lord is someone you worship. Mm. So after confessing his sin, he worships him by calling him lord and then he goes and follows him with his life. And do you notice that? What does he give up? He leaves his boat, that's his job. In one of the other Gospels, it tells us he leaves his family. So he leaves his dad and walks over him. He leaves his possessions like the net. He leaves everything because he knows that following Jesus is worth it compared to any other thing that he could have on this earth. After he understands who Jesus is, he responds in the right way here by confessing and following Jesus. What does that mean for us then? What could that mean for you? Jen, just... Maybe just help us understand that a little bit. For you, when you kind of look at this Jesus in the gospel here and maybe think about yourself, how does that make you feel? Well, I guess Chanks was really helpful last night, wasn't he? And if this was Simon Peter's response, and if, like Shanks said last night, we're all infected with this sin, then that means that when I compare myself to God, I know that I'm broken as well and that I need rescue. Yeah. yeah, yeah, helpful, really. And then seeing Simon Peter's response, how do you, for you now personally, how does that make you want to respond to Jesus? <laughs> I need to hold my hands up. I want to hold my hands up and admit that I can't compare to him. And it's so easy to forget sometimes we stop thinking about it and we do something good and we think we are, we're good and we're fine and we don't need rescue. But then I'm reminded how good God is and how amazing he is and I'm awestruck by that. And when I compare myself to that, I realize I need, I need him and I need his rescue. Yeah, really helpful. And I wonder what that means for you this morning as you think all of this through either for the first time or you've heard it multiple times. How do you respond to this rescue? to this man, Jesus. And we'll think about that a little bit more tonight as we look at the act of rescue 
and see what Jesus did and how far he went uh, to rescue us.